Hi, everybody, and welcome to this amazing program. This one is going to be at, uh, is going to be all about robotics and animatronic puppets. Uh, my name is Steve Hananya, and I've been working with robotics and all kinds of mechanical equipment for a long time. But the puppets and animatronics that you see here developed over time. So some of these took over 10 years even more to build. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself before I go into how I made these. And as you can see, they're all made from recycled parts. But let me tell you a little bit of my, about myself. I started out as an electronic engineer and working in a company where we made air traffic control systems. Now, as you know, when planes are flying in the sky, they need to have a certain amount of distance. So we built systems that actually monitor the, what's going on in the sky and making sure that the planes are keeping a distance between each other. So my part of the design team was to build the communications between the equipment that the air, air traffic controllers have and the airplanes above. Just like we have to maintain a distance between each other because of COVID-19, the same thing was with airplanes. Now, this is a long time ago. And while I was an electronic engineer, I started building robotic devices, all kinds of moving objects and uh, robots. And then I realized there were teachers and schools that were interested in the robots themselves. So I started developing an educational program with robotics, which later evolved into building these animatronic puppets. Just out of curiosity, if you wanted to know, um, there's an amazing article about me by the Make Magazine. It's called Finding Jim Hansen in Junk Will Make You Smile. It's by Caleb Kraft. And uh, it tells a little bit about what I do and how I use all kinds of recycled parts. So this is a brief introduction. And what I'm gonna do is go over and uh, go around my workshop and show you some of the animatronic puppets that I have. Just so you know, this is only a small part. There are more things that I make and there are robots that are too big to have here. But let me start from, the, uh, from this side, actually this side over here. And what you're looking at at the end is Techno Duck. Uh, Techno Duck, did not look like this when I first made this animatronic puppet, but it was one of the first one that I made. This took almost over 20 years to develop, but originally it looked very much like this, if you could see the picture, and it was not able to turn around. It did not have the eyebrows that you're seeing, and it was very different. Now, let me just do something with this. Uh, and actually, as I said, it's called Techno Duck. Now watch this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this amazing show. My name is Techno Duck. Oh, wait a second. I'm a robot duck. Oh, wait, no, I'm a wacky, wacky duck. Just so you know, I'm going to be running the show myself. So forget about Steven. I'm going to take over and run this show. So as you could see, I could also uh, add voices into my animatronic puppets, which makes it very interesting. So there's a lot of different uh, parts that go into this. There's the mechanics, there's the robotics, there's the engineering, there's the electronics. Now we can't go over everything today, it's just it would take too much time. But let me go over briefly uh, and show you the next one that I have here, which is the Wizard of Fun. This one was both Techno Duck and the Wizard of Fun were at the Maker Fair in 2015, and they both won the two awards, and these were ribbons that were given to me so I could show you that. The red ribbon was the best in class and the blue ribbon was editor's pick. And uh, I was caught by surprise because I didn't know that they were so interesting. But again, what I'm gonna do later is uh, 
let me just bring the camera back to me. What I'm going to do later is bring a close up. I'll bring the camera close to the, each of the animatronic puppets so you could see how they're working inside. Let's go over to this one. And this is the most recent one. This is a uh, Pac Man. And the interesting story about this is that I never knew that I would even build this. What happened was I had a, um, let me just set up the camera a little bit better. I had a globe like this and it was actually, you could open and close the globe and it looked like a round ball. And I said, why don't I convert that into a animatronic or puppet? And then I thought of the uh, Pac-Man game, the video game that we used to play. And I was like, that was my, one of my favorite things. So I had this already. And then the whole idea was how to animate the mouth. So I'll get into this a little bit more later, but I decided to use the orange one because of colors. I think the orange is just a lot more lively. Now, um, before we leave this, I just want to show you something. This is what the wizard looked like originally. Okay, so you could see um, it was very, very plain. It was just... Um, there were no eyebrows, it could not turn, and it could not tilt. And the mouth was not very pleasing either. The mouth that you see over here took a lot of work because I had to develop it. And I'll get a little bit into this um, maybe now just to show you how the mouth works. So originally, as I said, I had a problem getting the mouth to work really nicely. Now, when you speak, it's usually the bottom jaw that moves up and down. Let me bring the camera a little bit closer here. So it's not the upper part, it's the lower part. So I had a, a old video projector. And if you remember the old projectors had tapes in them and the video tapes would go into the machine and there would be a special device that would retract the tape. So I decide why don't I use the retractor as a way of building the mouth. So let's look at this a little more carefully. If we um, have something for the upper lip, I, I would need another, um, here we go. I would need something stationary like this, okay? And let me just set this down. And then what you could see as the mouth works, the lower jaw, Oh, the lower part, we just go up and down, simulating some kind of sound of voice. All right, and the upper part would stay there. And that's exactly what's going on. You have the upper part here and you have the lower part down here. So one of the things that are fun to do is have a simulation or recreation of how the mouth works. And this is a little project for anybody because I also teach, and when I teach robotics in schools, I give students ideas about how to develop their own animatronic robotics. And here's an, an here's a very simple idea. You have two foam pieces that you can cut. Now foam could be cut from a bigger piece like this. And what you then do is using a hacksaw, you will just cut it out, okay? I'll just cut out a piece to show you how this is done. And so basically it's like, cutting a piece of cake. Now I could turn this into two pieces just by cutting these two in halves, okay? And then I'll have two separate pieces. Now, what I like to do is then attach the two pieces together and it almost becomes like a mouth that's talking. But if you realize in cartoons, they actually do that. But in real life, a mouth does not do that. It's just the low part that moves. So it would be more like this. I don't know if this is coming out clear, but it works more like this as a mouth. Here's another one that could be used. Now, um, and then we could go like this. Now, I simply attached a wire at the end to hold it to, but this is something you could start with. Once you start with this, you could develop into something more uh, elaborate. Another way to make a mouth is use uh, belts from a vacuum cleaner, okay? And again, uh, all kinds of shapes, all kinds of, uh, you know, patterns. You could do some very interesting things with these. 
All right, and um, here's, here's kind of another way of doing this. So if you get into animatronics, what I suggest is you see how things work ana anatomically with other things, with toys, or even with people, the way they speak, the way they move their hands. Now, I just wanted to digress a little bit before I go on into something else. Um, and I'm just gonna shut down Pac-Man a little bit. So um, it's not gonna be too noisy. Besides building these animatronic uh, puppets and robots, as I said, when I first started out doing programs in schools, I built robotic, purely robotic devices. And one of them was how to recreate the hand movement because that's a very, very interesting thing because you gotta be very precise and it's gotta be functional. And so I designed a robotic hand, which I have over here, which is now just closing up, but I'll show you how this works in a second. But let's assume that for some reason, I had a hand injury, okay? And I could not use my hand. So what I would have is a cast. Okay, so I'm putting on this cast, all right? And it's gonna, be, it's gonna have to be pretty tight. Now, let's assume I cannot use my fingers, okay? So the question is, how do we attach the robotic, or a robotic hand as a substitute for my hand. So it would look like this. I wanna make sure that this is caught on camera. So it would be like this. And then what I would wanna use it is to do something functional. So first, let me try it out. I have a microphone. If I say close, right? So it's now everybody closing up. If I say open, it's opening up. Now watch this. I'm gonna pan over here uh, and I hope everybody could see that I have a soda can over here. All right, so I'm gonna say again, open, it's gonna open up. Close. So it's grabbing the can. Uh, let me come back to me, and then I'm going to try to drink from the soda can, and then I'm going to try to put it back, okay? And let's do that, and I'm going to say open, all right? And the gripper opens up. Now, when you look at this, let me just disconnect the power a little so you could see this a little better. This is built of all kinds of parts. These were Lego pieces. And actually you could design this completely from Lego. You don't need uh, mechanics or metal pieces. Lego has what's called the EV, EV3 and you could build a robotic hand and it could be even uh, using a microphone. But this was a little different because I wanted to use parts that I had laying around. So over here, I'm just making sure that you could see that. I have two gears. I have a warm gear in between and I have the two grippers. It's a bit technical, but it does work. And then I have power that goes into a pack, a portable pack that you can wear. So you can walk around with this. And you also have, as I showed you before, the microphone. So the question is, a lot of kids ask me, why is there a microphone? But you could guess that sometimes uh, people don't have, uh, they, can, they, ha they only have the ability to use their voice. So it was built for two reasons. One, if they could not use the other hand and just use their voice to do that. So let me put this away and let's go, I'm moving on to some other things that I, I do. And um, one other thing I wanted to show you in robotics is that before coming up with, again, with all these animatronic puppets, I used to work with something called Meccano. Meccano was a construction set. I want to make sure that the camera is able to see this. Uh, it's over here. It was a construction set. So it had a lot of uh, mechanical pieces in it. It looks like this. Let me just angle the camera a little bit better so you could see me. All right. 
And this was built out of the Meccano or Erector set. Now, for, and actually this is used even by older high school kids, even uh, colleges, because it has parts that you could put, put together and they're pretty accurate. And this was around for over a hundred years and people built with that. So this is what got me started in robotics. And I have one actually that will go up and down. It's supposed to be a ski lift, but we don't have the room in here to set up the whole thing. But what's important is when you build something like this, you also have to make sure that it's balanced. So there's issues with center of gravity, there's mechanics, there's geometry, uh, there's construction and design. So this is a very interesting thing to work with. And the company that makes it is called Meccano and Erector. So again, if you wanna get into robotics, or animatronics, I would suggest uh, checking something out like this. And, uh, and to give you a quick view, the company that makes it actually has some very interesting things. This is a uh, crane that they actually show how to build. And these are like different parts that would go into the crane. And again, the company, just so you know, is called Meccano and it, they've been around for a long time. So let's move on to something else. And um, I, this happened to me just three days ago. All right. I was going to show you uh, my place and my tools. And I found this tool that I had. Okay. It's a very interesting tool. I'm not, I think it's used by upholsters or a uh, certain kind of very fine work. But what it is, is a cutter. Okay, and it has very sharp teeth, as you could see. But I said, you know, this could be turned into kind of a dinosaur animatronic puppet. All you need to use is the handle, add something to it. And I drew the little eyes just to sketch that out. I don't know if you could see that, but I thought it was pretty cool. Now watch this. I then looked in my closet and I had a, um, a winter jacket that has fake fur. This is not real. This is synthetic fur. So I then said, why don't I put the fur on top of it? And it becomes uh, like any, I'm sure you know what a ferret is, but it, it's really neat. I said, you know, this could be a future project. And what about if, if the neck just sticks out? So as it, it's animated, the neck is sticking out. You know, it goes back in and maybe it's hiding, it's sticking out. So again, how would you animate this? You would use something called a servo motor. Servo motor is, a, uh, there's electrical motor and gears that make the, this turn. And you actually need power and a signal to do that. But if you were to put a servo motor over here, correct, you could actually make this animated by the uh, by the wheel over here, by actually the horn. This is called the horn on the servo motor, pulling this in and out. So this becomes almost an animated thing. And I just thought about this three days ago as I was putting the show together. So I wanna just go over some things that are very important uh, because I know for school students, when I do a program, they want to understand the process that goes into creating things. So first I tell everybody, you gotta come up with ideas, okay? And it could be something to help people like the robotic hand that I had. It could be for entertainment as these puppets are animatronic robotics, but it could also be for educational purposes. What I could not show you here, or maybe I'll take a second to show you, that's an amazing thing. I also build devices robotic devices to educate students about physics and science. And I'm gonna actually, I'll show you a little clip. I could share that with you. Um, and as we look down here, what I do and I tell everybody, look for things around the house. It could be educational toys, uh, go to Home Depot and look around, see what they have, take apart machines and toys. And let me just be more specific, for instance, um, I like taking apart big and small things. So bicycle parts, I have a lot of those. Printers, okay, print.
printer parts are a big thing. Hard drives, mechanical toys, electrical tape, gears, Lego gears, RC radio control, take things apart. But always, if, if you're not sure, just have somebody else helping you. Just to show you as an example, um, this came out from a printer, okay? Uh, so this actually was a typewriter, if I remember right. So typewriters have carriages that move back and forth and they have a belt. So in doing that, I actually created an elevator that can rise and go down. And here's the electrical motor. It's a very simple thing. You have the electrical motor here. You have two gears and you have the belt that goes up and down. Here's another uh, printer. And this is a neat thing because this printer would move like this, would move left and right. Okay. And what would animate this was the gear down here. Okay. So, and this is called a spiral, by the way. And um, so when you go up and down, that would be called uh, linear motion. And this would be called circular motion. So it's just that these things are very practical when you're building animatronic devices. Now, I want to go into something else that's totally different. This is my latest animatronic, uh, I guess, ro robot puppet, whatever you want to call it. And there's a surprise here. I'm not going to tell you the surprise because I want to show you what it does first. Okay, so let me um, power this on so you can see. Okay, so basically what's going on here is there's a sensor. In robotics, we use all kinds of sensors, but there's a sensor that realizes there is some kind of pressure. And when I release the pressure, I release this air hose from, I have a pump back here, watch what happens. It just stops moving the mouth. Now I could blow this manually and I could go like this. You see that? But I thought that was really neat. Now, the surprise comes in realizing that this is not just a mask that, this was kind of a party mask that I had, but when I take it off, this is a real mask. It was carved by some very good artists that cut the wood. And let me turn, this around so you could see it a little bit better. Okay, uh, let me give you a close up of this. If you look back here, uh, you could see that the wood was all carved out. So what I added was this motor that spins and pulls the jaw up and down. This was the hose that's blowing the balloon. So just to give you a little sample. There's something here, okay? When this motor turns, you could see the upper wheel, it's actually pulling on a wire, which makes the, uh, the jaw open and close, okay? But this was worn by people for some kind of ceremony, and these eyes were not there. So when you put it on, it actually, your eyes go through here. It actually looks pretty spooky. This, is, this would be a very interesting Halloween um, uh, mask or something. But again, I was at a, don't remember, kind of a specialty store, novelty store, and I saw this mask and I said, you know, why don't I animate the, the mouth? And that's how this whole project started, but it's still evolving. And the motor that I used for animating this looks like this. This came out again from an old VCR machine, video recorder or videotape. Those machines have a lot of neat parts in there that you could use. And you, you could see the motor down here. 
and it's turning a wheel. Okay, it turns this larger wheel and you could do things with it. And most things that work, small motors like this in VCR or videotapes, they only use 12 volts, but they will work with a six volt battery. So they're very easy to use. So that's another thing I was gonna show you. Now, I'm gonna get into another part of uh, animatronics. The more sophisticated animatronics that you see, let me go back here and I'll direct the camera on me. The animatronics that you see at Disney World and you go to professional parks, uh, places where there's a lot of amusement, do not always use motors. What they use is hydraulics. Hydraulic is either air pressure, water pressure, uh, it could be oil also because it's just a lot stronger. It doesn't fail as quickly. So there is a way to build robotics using um, air pressure. And this is another way for you to do it. Okay, so I wanted to keep it simple, but you could actually buy these syringes without the needles, just at hobby stores on the internet. And all it is are two plastic syringes and there's air in the line. So when I push one, watch what happens to the other one. The other one begins to lift up. When I push the other one, the other one will lift up, okay? So I can transfer, what I'm doing from here, back here is transferring the movement from one location to the other. So basically I could make something move from a distance. And instead of sending electrical signals, I'm just sending air pressure to the line. Now, how does this work in real life? Okay, I have here a, a kind of an animatronic robotic, um, uh, whatever we want to call it, we call it a tiger or something, a lion. And this came out from an original toy set called Robotix. I don't think the company still makes these construction sets, but you can find sets on eBay. Okay, and I had one of them, but the mouth just, you know, was just by itself, it had a motorized motor, but I decided to convert it into hydraulics. So here's the syringe that's actually gonna open the, the head part. Did you see that? And this is the other one I'm pushing over here. So when I push it, it goes down. Let me make sure that there's a good close up of this so you could see what's happening. And then, oops, it's actually this way. Uh, all right, everybody see that? And then this will open. But the neat part about this, okay, let's just set this up on the table so you'll get a better view of this. And I'm gonna move the camera over here so you could see it. So now it's right here in front of the camera and watch this. So I'm not near it and I'm back here and I could make it. Everybody see that? So um, basically I'm animating the uh, whatever I built using air pressure. So that's another way to go with this. Now in building robotics, as I mentioned, there are, there's a process that goes that you're developing in your mind. What do I want to do? how I want to do it, where do I collect the parts? One thing I didn't show you here is I have a, on my workshop, I have a drill. A drill, this is more kind of a professional drill, but it's, a, it's useful because it allows me to make holes and also cut out uh, designs in wood. And this is one of my favorite sayings. If you read it, it says, Time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. This was written by Bertrand Bert Russell. Okay, so I, I came across this and I said, this is good as long as you're doing something very const constructive. Now, I just wanna show you how Pac-Man works, which I did not do that yet. And basically it will respond to some kind of movement. Did you see that? It just tilts the head forward. And let me move my hand back. All right, and then let's increase the volume. I can't see you, you're less than four. Okay, 
originally when I designed and built Pac-Man, I used these hands, okay? And they were just too narrow and flimsy. I didn't think that I could do very much with them. I don't know, this came from some kind of party store. So it, the hands look neat, but it wasn't what I wanted because I wanted the hands to actually open and close. I had to put some mechanism in here and I wanted the, the uh, hand itself, the wrist to do something. So this took a little bit of thinking and, and doing things. Uh, but I want to show you what it really does do, okay? So to demonstrate that, I'm going to use an old, this is an old animatronic puppet that was made in the 80s, over 30 years ago. It was called uh, Teddy Rockspin. And actually with this thing, it was one of the very first things that they had. The eyes could open and close. The mouth could actually be animated as well, all right? Uh, but what we're going to do now, just show you how, what, what uh, Pac-Man is going to do. So if something comes in front of it, this is what happens. Your height is five feet and zero inches. So it actually tells you how tall you are. All right, we could do that one more time. Your height is five feet and zero inches. Okay, I also uh, want to show you something else. And that is, we'll do a walk around to see things from close up so you could get an idea of what's going on. Let me just take the camera with me. And the first thing I want to show you is how Pac-Man would work. I, I'm holding a camera and if I'm standing in front of it, okay. Your height is four feet and eight inches. Okay, there's a solenoid here that's pulling the mouth and making it open and close. And okay, and there's also a motor that makes the Pac Man go up and down. Okay, so let's go over here and look at the wizard itself. There are sensors in the front that track where the person is. And the wizard could do other things as well. It could actually bend up and down, which I'm gonna do now. All right, so let's, let's do that. Um, okay, so let me just see if I could, Yes, it's actually, what it does is it's tilting. So it's tracking somebody as they're coming close and moving far away. But look at the mouth mechanism. If I could show you a close up and you could see that you have the video tape retractor working inside the mouth itself. Okay, you have two stepper motor moving the eye. You have the eyelashes moved by a stepper motor. And then you have in the back, two separate motors that are actually the stepper motors that are moving the eyelids themselves. This is quite elaborate and there's a lot of wiring, wiring involved in this also. Okay, um, let's go over here and look at TechnoDuck, which is a simpler design. You have the eyelashes, the eyelids, the glasses. You have the mouth that's animated like that. It does that by using a solenoid that pushes up and down and it animates the mouth. It could also swivel and turn to look at you. And I have not actually powered that function on. So here's a little bit of my workshop. I, I use a lot of power supplies for different purposes. So one of them is the large power supply that's high voltage and another one is 
maybe 20 volts, 10 amps. Another one is one amp at 15 volts. I have an oscilloscope. I have a signal generator. Oscilloscope allows us to see signals, track different signals that are happening in real time. A signal generator generates pulses. So those are very helpful things that I have. Then I have all kinds of tools. I'm sure you could see some of the tools back here. I have more tools and more tools. I have like an endless supply of tools. Okay, and there's also a lot of stuff back here that you normally can't see, but that's where I have my storage area. Um, so this is a little bit of my, my room. And don't forget, I'm, I'm very limited with space because I have to do this all in one room in one, one place itself. I just want to be sure that we are not running out of time. Okay, we have another six, seven minutes to go. So let me show you a few other things. Um, one of, let's say you are building a puppet out of scratch. Okay, so here's an idea I had. You could go to Home Depot, any hardware store and buy a spring, okay? Attach a styrofoam ball attach two eyes to it and then it's kind of a movable thing but when you put weight on it i had this hat from some other thing the whole thing becomes pretty neat it looks like it's just swaying and if you put something like that outside and there's wind the thing will just move all the time it looks like it's alive and then you can add hands or something else to it but that's just another idea of animatronic thing um Another thing that inspired me a long time ago was this over here. I don't know if anybody has ever seen this before. I thought this is one of the coolest things I ever saw. Um, let me turn it on and you'll see what it does. Okay, so this, this is a xylophone kind of a musical animatronic thing in a small package. It was made for the holidays. I don't know if they still have them, but I thought this was very neat. And these things are kind of nice. And if you want, you could take them apart as well. Now I wanna show you before I forget, one of the robotic projects that I worked on, when I go to a school, this is what I do. I have to just share this screen with you. So you're gonna see it. Uh, let me do that, okay? Uh, I'm gonna share this video so you could see what I do at schools when I go there. This is a robotic platform that simulates a space ride if somebody's on a rocket ship. Okay, so uh, this is a little clip. The teacher there is a very special friend and very special teacher. Her name is Julia Johnson, and she teaches a gifted a gifted program for very ambitious ambitious students. And I come and present a robotics program for that school. But this is what I do sometimes outside these animatronic uh, robotic things. I built other things. Um, so I believe we're almost out of time. I want to know if there are any questions. 
Uh, let me see, I'm going to check my chat line and just see if there are any questions. Let me see. Okay, so I want to mention one other thing. Let me go back. Okay, um, all right. I want to mention one other thing in case uh, in case any there are teachers, educators, or museums or schools that are interested in me providing a program, they could reach me at this email. Okay, it's stevesinnovations at gmail.com. Also, Maker Fair has my contact information as well. Um, so I always I think the most important thing in doing this is learning something new, learning how to be creative, inventive, and also working together. You know, when I make something, it has to be applied to either fun, education, helping people, as I showed before. And uh, anyway, I just feel that this has been very interesting. This is the first year we're doing this virtually. So when I do this in a in the Hall of Science or at a Maker Fair, I actually have this spread out on a large table and people come up and see how each of one, each one of these work. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any other thing, but I think we covered one other thing I could cover very quickly. If you wanna collect interesting parts, anybody know what this is? This is a hard drive. Okay, this is a hard drive from the old computer, desktop computers, and when you open it, there are amazing parts in there. There's the discs and in between the discs, these aluminum washers are there. So I took the washers and I made them into glasses, but you could do all kinds of other things with these. They're just really, everything has something inside. And to think that this stored almost 800 megabytes of information at that today we're in a terabyte, but at that time, 800 megabytes was a lot you know, 800 million bytes of information. But again, I'm just very fascinated by how things work. So this is one, and I think that, well, maybe one other thing I could quickly show you. Um, this is not my invention, but people are curious about these things. This is an original, original phone, okay? It was called the candlestick phone. Somebody invented it. To me, it's a very inspiring piece of technology because it worked, but there is something about this you're never gonna see anywhere. This was not just a candlestick phone. This was, I don't know if you could see what it says here, five cents, and there's a little opening. This was actually a pay phone. This is how a pay phone looked like in the 19, early 1900s, 1905, 1910, 1920 even. So, I, looking at this, people were trusted to put the money in, okay? Uh, I just don't have right now anything to put in here, but actually that's how it worked. There was just a slot and you walk by, put the money and use the phone. And by the way, this weighs a lot. This is almost like eight pounds and this is pretty heavy. If you go too fast, you're gonna break your, your ear or something. I mean, this is just weighs a lot. So shows you how technology changes over years. I'm putting this back. Um, and I think I need to sign a, sign off. Let me check the time. Yes, we have one more minute. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna get ready to, uh, to end the program. I just wanna mention a few things for those who wanna uh, build and do things themselves. Okay, there is a wonderful company called Meccano, as I mentioned before, that makes the metal pieces, but Meccano started making robotics. So this is like a huge robot. I think it's four feet and a half in size. It could move around. It could learn to understand your commands. And this is, I think the XL2, then I have something more recent but again, actually there's a picture here of what the robot looks like. And this is how it's made to be built. So again, there's all kinds of things out there for those who really wanna 
do things, but I think the neatest part is when you develop your own ideas, you build your own kind of creations, and then, you know, and then you have fun with it. Uh, but again, it takes a lot of time, a lot of discipline. Okay, I um, want to show you one other thing. I don't know if I showed you this, but this, these were the awards that I got the, for the Wizard of Fun and TechnoDoc. The red ribbon was for best in class and blue ribbon for editor's pick. And so those were the two. Uh, I sometimes work with other animatronic things. Uh, this is a snowman that, that I kind of took and adapted it to something. And what's standing next to it is a, a not marionette on strings, but I've not used it yet. Uh, let's see what else I have. Again, if uh, any, if one of the early robots that I built was a this robot. Okay, and it was actually a hand gripper, you could see it, that would dunk a ball into a basket. Okay, and again, these evolved over years and years, and eventually I ended up building more of these animatronic puppets. Um, so I think, I think I covered almost everything, which is really good. I'm just checking out um, what I still have to show you very quickly. How do I get the eyelids? I had a, this came from an Easter plastic egg. I cut it out, I cut it into smaller pieces and I had the uh, eyelid for the uh, Wizard of Fun. Uh, then I just, this came from another animatronic toy. I think it was Wabi Robotics. And there, there you have it. I think that's basically, basically it. Um, okay. So let me wish everybody good luck and happy explorations. Whatever you do, have fun, enjoy, learn as much as you can when you have a chance to do it. So take care and I'll say goodbye.